Hey everyone, um, man, this kind of sucks. It's like my eighth recording of this. I've been having some issues with my equipment today, but you know what? Does not going to stop me here because we have some important news about Switchboard to talk about. You've already seen the headline title, uh, so you're well aware of what it is. And I'm going to provide the evidence to show you that uh, there is indeed going to be exclusive games on the Switch Pro. But I want to talk about this from a couple angles. One, from the idea that obviously uh, this is stupid. Nintendo shouldn't do it. Nintendo hasn't done it before. There's going to be people that say that. Uh, another angle is going to be where it's a good thing. I know. Hold on to your butt cheeks. And the other angle is where regardless of how we know this is happening, we should have expected it. Now, before I get into this, I want to remind you, we are giving away a copy of Monster Hunter Rise and two $20 Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, or Xbox gift cards. To enter, head down to the description or the pinned comment. Otherwise, let's get into this stuff because, oh boy, do we have some great stuff to talk about. Now... This original topic comes from Nate Drake, a.k.a. Nate the Hate. You might know him from the Spawncast over on Spawnwave, one of the most popular, if not the most popular video game podcast in the world. Also, he has his own YouTube channel, and he's been well-known well before even any of this YouTube stuff uh, to be an industry insider with multiple connections to several third-party publishers. Uh, he himself may even work in the industry. I'm not exactly sure on his entire background. I've never really had a personal conversation with him, although of note, I have been on two episodes of the Spawncast over a year ago, and I believe he was present for at least one, if not both, of those episodes, but I have not had any direct interaction with him. Uh I will link to his channel and his podcast as well, where he goes into much deeper dive discussions on this stuff, which there's a lot you can glean out of it, actually, at the Nate the Hate YouTube channel. I'll link his channel down in the description as well. But he didn't talk about this at his channel, at least he didn't talk about it so bluntly and directly, although he's probably referenced it if you listen through his podcast. He came out on Reset Era when people were talking about whether or not there's going to be exclusives on the Switch Pro and uh, in a thread all about the Bloomberg article because the Bloomberg article clearly detailed we're getting a Switch Pro. It's likely coming this year. Uh, mass production starting by the summer. Uh, we are you know, getting a 720p screen again, but it's going to be a bigger screen. It's going to be an OLED panel. Uh, we're going to be getting at least a 4K output, bare minimum for Hulu and Netflix, which we can't do currently are hulu and netflix hulu and youtube man do I, oh, I wish netflix was on switch but whatever that's neither here nor there um i have plenty of devices to watch all this stuff on i personally don't even use youtube uh, apps and all this stuff that much on switch maybe i would if it was 4k more often i do have three 4k tvs in my house doesn't mean i'm richie rich over here 4k tvs are really really cheap and none of these tvs are like the super expensive really nice even though probably when i game on there's no hdr 10 or any of that so uh it's not like you know i'm rocking like the massive panels over here that that give you the best possible gaming experience but i'm just an average consumer i get 4k tvs you know i get them cheap it is what it is so i think that we could take that bloomberg article and take it mostly as fact and i think this because the person who did it not bloomberg itself forget the outlet the person who wrote it, Takahashi Machizuki, used to work for the Wall Street Journal. And he, in the past, got everything right about Switch Lite. Literally down to exact dimension details. He announced all of this before Nintendo unveiled it, and then obviously released it. He knew everything. So, clearly he's got real context in the industry. That's why I can believe the stuff he says about the 720p OLED panel, 7-inch screen... 4k output i can believe all this and then we can kind of expound from there what that stuff actually means but nate drake came out and uh talked about this a little bit further talking about how there's concerns about exclusives and he says there will be some select exclusives especially from third-party partners may not be a big number of them but i know of at least one and he said this over on reset era it doesn't really matter if you like reset era or not it's about the person the information comes from not about where the where the information was posted so here's the thing he he knows of at least one third-party exclusive game that's going to switch pro that will not be on current switches and when you think about it it feels kind of idiotic for a game like that to exist you know logically it's stupid why would there be exclusive games on the switch pro from third parties or nintendo it makes no sense why would you leave the 80 plus million current switch owners probably 90 plus 95 maybe 100 million uh switch and switch Lite owners behind by making exclusive games on a platform there's not going to be that many of and if we're honest scalpers might make it extremely difficult for anyone to get their hands on why then would they do this like why 
are they going to have exclusives at all? After all, the PlayStation 4 Pro, Xbox One X, did not have exclusive games. They required all games that were coming to that platform also come to the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. After all, the PlayStation 5 and, PlayStation and Xbox Series X are out, and S, can't forget about that as well. And pretty much there's like no exclusives because almost everything coming to it, third party and even first party wise, beyond Demon Souls, of course, and Astro's Playroom, which was built specifically for PS5 as a demo, uh, those games are all also going to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One for, for at least the next year or two. And I talked in the past how it would make a lot of sense for all games at launch to come to Switch Pro, but also the old-gen Switches for at least another couple of years, up until they're ready to talk about the next-gen Switch, where they could then have you know exclusive games on that that also maybe come on the Pro, but then don't come on the OG Switch. That was my hope and my dream, but uh, that's apparently not not reality. Looking at what Nintendo's doing, according to the Natrix, there's going to be third-party exclusive games, bare minimum. Maybe not a huge number of them, but there will be some. But, you know, what, what, what are we talking about here with Nintendo? Why would Nintendo allow that to happen? Why wouldn't they mandate, like Sony and uh, Microsoft did, that you cannot have exclusive games on this platform? Well, Switch is in the same market as the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. As a Switch owner, who also owns like the PlayStation 5 Series X is like a little bit off camera here. Um, as someone who owns those platforms, I would still like the option to get third-party games like Call of Duties, Assassin's Creeds, etc. Uh, just as just examples, there's other better games out there you could probably come up with. Um, I would like to see those games come to Switch in some form. Obviously, streaming is a way, but I would like to see it come to a form that I can play natively so I could literally play on the go without worry of an internet connection. That would be my personal preference, that that's at least an option. Plus, then you can also have people who end up double dipping. Right now, people are actually looking at double dipping for things like the Diablo 2 remake coming because guess what? The remaster, whatever you want to call it. The resurrection. Uh, the reason that people are excited about that is because it's got cross-platform play but not only that it has cross-platform saves so like the witcher 3 you could play it on your pc you could play it on your xbox your playstation whatever and then bring your save file over to the switch and continue it on the go and vice versa it's actually an ideal situation for companies that want to try to convince consumers to double dip you could argue they could include two versions for one price but that's a different story the bottom line is uh that it's an it's an incentive to double dip and it adds value to the switch to have the option to play these games in a form in a position in a way that you cannot do it regardless of the 4k regardless of uh, of all the impressive visuals and, and, and all the crazy dual sense controller things guess what none of that's available to you when you're in your car typically unless you're like Jerry rigged your car to run it. None of that's typically capable when you're on a uh, train or on a plane. Like this stuff just isn't possible uh, in those portable settings. On breaks at work, you probably don't get a chance to come home. Maybe you do during COVID because you work at home. But before that, you probably didn't get a chance to come home and game for a half hour. I mean, you have the drive to home, you have the drive back or the public transit there and back. That alone takes up probably most of your break. So it, it, it's very um, interesting to see where Switch has become this viable platform for third parties, but then we still don't have all third-party games because there's not enough power. You look at Nintendo's history now. When we look at just the history of, you know, Xbox and PlayStation, you'd be like, oh, look, they did this. But Nintendo hasn't. Go all the way back to the Game Boy Color. That's the first time Nintendo released, quote-unquote, a more powerful platform. Or shall we say, a platform that has new features that don't exist on the prior platforms. Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. Oh, sorry, Game Boy, Game Boy Pocket. Game Boy Advance is a whole new generation. So Game Boy, Game Boy Pocket. Those were basically the same system. One was just shrunk down. It's kind of like the Switch versus the Switch Lite, although technically one docks with the TV and one doesn't. But portably, they're pretty much the same platform. One's just smaller, okay? That's like comparing the Game Boy and the Game Boy Pocket. But then the Game Boy Color came out. Did the Game Boy Color not have exclusive games? Of course it did. It had a lot of exclusive games, even from Nintendo. Yeah, that was a thing that happened factually in the same generation of system. Some people consider Game Boy Color a next generation Game Boy, but it wasn't. Nintendo counts Game Boy Color sales in with the rest. It was just a mid-gen upgrade. It was the upgrade before people were doing these upgrades regularly. Then Sega started doing it and then got a little crazy with it and then kind of sank their own company in the console space. That's a whole nother story, but the, it happens, all right? Now, look at Nintendo when the, the next time they did it again. 
Well, you had the Game Boy Advance, and then you had the Game Boy SP. SP, again, added a new feature, but the new feature was a backlit screen. It didn't require the games to do anything special, so it didn't get exclusive games because, I mean, the feature it added had nothing to do with game development and having to add extra features in. It's just, look, now you can see your game in the dark. Good. <laughs> um, then we get up to, well, the DS, right? The big replacement for the Game Boy Advance. DS. They released the DSi. There were exclusive games on the DSi. Not many. Not many. I think it was less than a dozen. But there were exclusive games on the DSi. All right. Whatever. That was a DSi. No one cares about that. That was so long ago. Fine. What about the 3DS? Sure, we got, you know, the 2DS, which you know is like the Switch Lite. Took away a key feature of the 3DS, but you could still play all the same games. Okay, but what about the new 3DS? Which is, let's be honest, a more likely name for the Switch Pro than uh than the switch pro new nintendo switch new 3ds new super lucky tail new super mario brothers like you see it's probably going to be called the new nintendo switch let's just be honest but setting the side naming conventions what's interesting here is looking at this from the perspective of the new 3ds had exclusive games from nintendo xenoblade chronicles port exclusive to that could not be played on the original 3ds oh but what about other games what do you mean other games? Do you mean like Minecraft? Minecraft is one of the, the biggest, if not the most popular, biggest game ever created. Only available on new 2DS and new 3DS. Not 2DS, not 3DS, new 2DS, new 3DS. Exclusive in terms of that platform. Could not be played on the prior gen or the prior, actually the, the older versions of the system. Couldn't do it. Even games that came out on the new 3DS that were also on the old 3DS almost felt like they shouldn't have even been on the old 3DS. I'll give you an example. Hyrule Warriors Legends. That's right, that game that got ported with extra content from the Wii U, added Linkle, all this jazz, right? Controversy with the Zelda community. Guess what? That game ran beautifully on the new 3DS. On the OG 3DS, single-digit frames. I'm sorry, the game shouldn't exist on that. If you're someone who disagrees with that and loved the game on the original 3DS, my power to you, I can't handle that game on that platform. I needed a new 3DS. I already had a new 3DS, but I still had an OG 3DS at the time. That game was what made me get rid of my OG 3DS. That the realization that, hey, you know, maybe we shouldn't be holding back games for the 3DS anymore. Plus, the new 3DS became the best seller of that generation. So, and maybe Nintendo hopes that as well. If you sold, you know, 80, 100 million, you know, of these current Switches, maybe they want to sell 100 million of Switch Pros. I have no idea. Uh, all I know is that uh, Nintendo is doing it. And whether you like it or not, we're getting an upgraded Switch. And the reason that it's a positive that we are going to have exclusives isn't because the exclusives exist. It's because if you've been looking for a Switch that has better frame rate, a Switch that does better resolution, a Switch that gives you better visuals, you need a platform that's going to end up having some exclusive games on it. The third parties, bare minimum, feel is worth giving exclusives to that they don't think they can make it run at an acceptable way on the original Switch, they need extra power. Because that means this Switch does have extra power. There is a beefier hardware under. If you ever want to like, tell you say, oh, you don't have any proof there's beefier hardware, that 4K output could just literally be Hulu and YouTube, and that 4K output could already be done on the Tegra X1. You're right. You're right. You're not wrong. You're right. But to have third-party exclusive games, especially if you want to get games from PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, you're going to need beefier hardware. And the fact that Nate Drake here is saying they exist, he knows of at least one, but there's probably many more. Guess what? We're getting more powerful hardware, whether you like it or not. Now, I'm going to be getting a Switch Pro day one, or try to. Scalpers are going to make it hard, and that's going to be an issue. It was an issue with Switch last year. For a period of time, scalpers were, you know, Getting two, three, two to three hundred extra dollars for a Switch on eBay at a time when it was really hard to get a Switch, even a Switch Lite, it was really hard for a couple months there. It got really dicey. But hey, you know what? It is what it is. This is the world we live in. I don't think technology should stop moving forward because of the pandemic, because things are hard to get sometimes, because the chip shortages. We shouldn't just put the world on pause because you can't get your PlayStation 5 or your Series X right now, or your GPU for your uh, computer, or a CPU, or can't even build a PC right now for an affordable price. The world shouldn't stop because you can't get the product you want right at the moment, 
right? It would be like saying, oh, I really want to get this car, this new Honda or whatever, it's or Tesla, whatever is popular these days, and it's completely sold out. So they should stop making the next version? They should stop improving? No. We should just exercise some patience and get things when we can. Most people aren't going to be able to afford a brand new system right at launch anyways. You talk about the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series a majority of consumers interested in it don't have the money right off the bat regardless. Same thing for Switch Pro. And if you already own a Switch, it's not like there's going to be so many exclusives you're going to feel like, I need to upgrade. But I am going to tell you right now, I'm pretty excited at the prospect that potentially Breath of the Wild 2 is 60 FPS. Potentially old updates could exist for the original Breath of the Wild to get native 1080p when docked with 60 FPS. I'm excited about the prospects of what a Switch Pro can mean for old games and new games. And yeah, I'll still have my old Switch as well. Will I be using it as much once I have the Switch Pro? Probably not. I'll probably let my kids play with it and I'll, I'll use the Pro version. But Because they are not going to care as much about the graphic updates as, as I... You know, when I was a kid, I didn't care as much about it. As much as we warred on the playground over 8-bit, 16-bit, 32... Like, in the end, none of us really knew what the hell we were talking about. <laughs> Uh, anyways, folks, I'm Nathan Robojets from the Center Prime. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. And hey, it's okay if you're upset by this and okay if you disagree with me. I'm not here uh, to tell you that your opinion is wrong and your personal desires are wrong. They're not. But mine's not either. So maybe if we could just all respect each other, we'd all get along much better. All right, folks. I'm Nathan Robojets from the Center Prime. If you got it this far in the video, what the hell are you doing? Like and subscribe. It's a long video. And I'll catch you in the next one.